I am pursuing my bachelor's degree in computer science and I am in now my third year. Talking about my tech interest, I am learning web development and open source contribution. Though my all interest always lie in Python programming, AI ML data science is a significant field that always grab my attention. So if anyone of want any help regarding anything be it professional or personal, you can always reach out to me on my socials. Now from here, Kajal will take over. She will first explain unit one pathway three to you. After that, we will move to unit two. Over to you, Kajal. So, hey everyone, this is Kajal Anshana, the facilitator of Android Compose Camp Session 2. I welcome you all. So, let's have a look at today's schedule. So, first we will be discussing Pathway 3 from Unit 1. In the previous session, we discussed uh, two pathways from the Unit 1. And uh, after that, we will be covering Unit 2. So first let's have so first let's have am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay, so first let's have an introduction to some important terms. First let's see what is Gradle. So Gradle is a build system which is responsible for code compilation or any conversions which is mandatory for it. Uh, hen uh, hence, it runs uh, the app on the device. So uh, now let's see what is emulator. Emulator, emulator is the virtual device which runs your, which runs on your computer, and it lets your app run. Then uh, you might be familiar uh, familiar with user interface. A user interface is what you see on the screen. Text images, buttons, and uh, it can be anything which is displayed on the screen. So first, uh, so first let's hop into our first example that is Hello Android, which is a simple app which just uh, displays a simple text that is Hello Android. So uh, first we have declared the package uh, where this code is saved. So it contains the name of it. After that, we have imported some of the libraries, which is necessary for, uh, for the uh, important keywords used in this code. For example, like uh, we have used text. For example, we have used text here. So for that, we will need to import that. And uh, don't worry that uh, how you will find how you'll find the uh, what libraries to import the Android Studio already provides it. Uh, means uh, it automatically suggests you what to import for that. So first we have created main activity. A main activity is uh, like, uh, uh, like an app. Uh, there are several screens or we can say activities. So these are called as activities. So, uh, our first screen is main activity, which uh, which is displaced, uh, which is uh, displayed in front of the user as the first screen. Then here the set content is uh, uh, is where we call the functions, the composable functions. Now here uh, the composable function we have in the uh, in the composable functions. Uh, uh, we uh, use the jetpack compose pack. See, as you can see here, composable denotes uh, the jetpack compose being used, jetpack compose library. Now here we have created a surface, uh, which, uh, uh, which just modifies the things or uh, which just provides a frame set, which just provides a frame set to, uh, for your app to be uh, to be in particular set uh, like an uh, to be in particular frame for a widget to be after that uh, we are calling greeting greeting function as you can see it is declared over here we have created a function greeting 
which is taking a parameter name, which is a string. Then uh, we have created a text widget, which have text hello, then uh, there's a parameter, there's a variable, uh, it is taking name. While calling the greeting function, we have assigned Android, as you can see as the value, the, uh, yeah. After that, uh, this preview thing is, the preview thing uh, is only supported in Jetpack Compose. This is for uh, uh, the preview of the, the preview of the particular function. Like if you are, go if you are going to set this preview in this function, so it's, uh, it's just gonna display this thing and uh, nothing in the other code. The preview thing allows uh, you to uh, allows you to run a particular functions output so that to, uh, so that it would be easier for you to design your app fast so now let's have a look at another app that is birthday card app So here, as you can see, there's a text, happy birthday, Radhi. Then there's an image. So here, how many widgets are there? Two, image and the text. Now here, uh, the same thing, main activity is there, then set content. One more thing I would like to tell you. Uh, this thing is not uh, that much necessary to be written. Uh, you can just directly call the greeting function. It just provides the frame set. It is not that much necessary to write. Likewise, here I did. The greeting function is called the parameter assigned. Uh, then uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to upload the image, you, uh, you will need to go to view view folder in the Android Studio and then uh, and then just click uh, resource manager then from there you can uh, just upload the image I will show you the live example later then here uh, then here a uh, well image now here in the uh, value image we have assigned we have assigned here the uh, where from where we are using this image, the address of the image, which is in the drawable file. After that, we are just uh, using image, image uh, widget and uh, setting its uh, parameters like painter equal to image, which, uh, which will be this image. Then content, uh, then content description is null. Then uh, it will be set to Max, uh, maximum height of the app or the uh, or the Android used uh, than the maximum width then uh, content scale is for cropping the image if it is uh, not uh, suitable for the screen uh, height and width then uh, then we are just displaying the text happy birthday name after this Anjali they will be taking over teaching you the Kotlin fundamentals. If you have uh, any doubts, you can ask me in the chat box. Yeah, this birthday card app uh, was like in unit one pathway three. So if anyone have any doubt, you can ask Kajal. Also Kajal, Kajal can you please stop presenting? I will present. So yeah, uh, now we move to Kotlin fundamentals. Firstly, can um, all of you tell who have the experience in programming and who have not? Like just write in the chat, like they have, they know C++, Java or any other language. Uh, 
कुणाल मैंने कहा है कि यहाँ पे कितने लोग हैं जिनको मतलब प्रोग्रामिंग आती है ऑलरेडी मतलब उसने सी प्लस प्लस जावा या पाइथन कुछ भी मतलब पहले पढ़ा हो वट अबाउट अदर्स Okay, so uh, in this Scotland fundamentals, or you can see in the course, uh, like uh, it's not that much. I mean, if else and a little bit of advanced concept, hai, so you can learn. So starting with the Scotland fundamental, write uh, conditional in Scotland. So in Scotland also, like any other language, we write if else statement. So yeah. in kotlin you can express if statement like conditionals are like we have given two choices matlab ki hame do choices di gayi hain usme se hame ek choose karni hai ki ya to ye true hoga ya to ye false hoga so similarly in if or else case we write two choices or like let me show uh, the android course which is designed like this we have given uh, like a certain statement we have to check whether it's true or false okay so in this example we have given a statement like is traffic light red if traffic light is red we have to stop or otherwise we need to go similarly in if else statement we write this in a programming language So in Kotlin also we write this like a function. So if we run this code on a code editor, so it will print stop. Like we have created a function where we have given a value or a variable traffic light whose value is red. If अगर traffic light red हुई तो वो print कर देगा stop otherwise uh, like it will print other variable which is written in else statement okay so like in Kotlin we can write in, like various statement in when parameter also so in when statement are preferred when two or more branches are considered like हमें एक वैल्यू दी गई है इन दिस क्वेश्चन वी हैव गिवन अ वैल्यू एम्बर एंड हेयर आर ट्रैफिक लाइट कलर जहाँ पे हमने रेड येलो ग्रीन तीनों कलर रखी है हम इफ एल्स के केस में क्या कर सकते हैं कि सिर्फ एक वैल्यू को चेक कर सकते हैं बट जब हम वेन स्टेटमेंट लगाएंगे तो उसमें हमें हम तीन या उससे ज्यादा वैल्यू मतलब तीन नहीं उससे ज्यादा वैल्यू भी दे सकते हैं सो इफ यू रन दिस कोड ऑन कोड एडिटर वी हैव गिवन द वैल्यू ऑफ एम्बर सो इट विल प्रिंट द वैल्यू ऑफ एम्बर विच इज स्लो Okay, you can check on the code editor. It is same as the if one. Now, similar in the case of else if, inside the parenthesis of else if keyword, you need to add boolean expression as a condition for the else if branch followed by the body inside pair of curly braces. In else if condition also, if we have given a value to if condition, if it states true, so it will print the value of if condition. Otherwise, it will go to else if loop. It again check the value. Other if it matches, so it will print uh, that value. Otherwise, it will go to else and print the last value. Like uh, loop से वो पूरा check करेगा. अगर वो value नहीं होगी, so it will print the value which is in else statement. Hello. Uh, yes. Ah uh, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, can I get to know what is loop? A uh, loop, uh, like, we uh, in any program or in any one of them, we use a loop to have the iteration. I mean, we have to repeat something once again. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Like uh, those who already know programming, they know the value of null. In Kotlin, also we have the value uh, named null. In Kotlin, there is a dis difference between nullable and non-nullable types. Nullable type are the variable which can hold the null value. Null value is basically a void value. That means उसके कोई value नहीं है. वो सिर्फ मतलब zero है. Those who have maths, they know what is void or null. 
तो उसकी मतलब कोई वैल्यू नहीं है और एक है नॉन नलेबल टाइप विच कांट होल्ड नल वैल्यू उसमें हम नल वैल्यू स्टोर नहीं कर सकते हैं सो so, अगर हमें एक नल वैल्यू को डिक्लेयर करवाना है सो दिस इज द फॉर्मेट इट इज इट इज ऑलरेडी इन द कोर्स ऑल्सो इफ वी इफ वी रन दिस कोड ऑन कोड एडिटर So like in this, um, we here we have declared a variable known a uh, favorite actor string, and this is the format. Like this is the format to uh, show the null value or uh, show non-nullable value in the Kotlin. We have to put the question mark, and then here we store the value. And here we are printing the value of favorite character. So first it will print Sandra O. After that we have updated the favorite actor value to null, so it will later print null. Like if we remove this line, so it will print value of null. Can anyone tell why it have printed the value of null rather than Sandra? Oh. Like you can write in chat box also. Okay. See, here we have taken the variable favorite actor string or like a variable Sandra O. If we print the value here, so it will print Sandra O because the latest value of favorite actor is Sandra O. But later we have updated the value to null, so it will print null. If we remove this line, so it will print null rather than Sandra O because the updated value is printed in programming rather than the first one. Okay, I hope this is clear. Also, there is a function in Kotlin, like any other programming language, that is dot length. So it will print the length of the given string or the given variable. Kotlin have a major function known as dot question mark dot save call function. It is used uh, like it will use in every program of Android app. So you need to like uh, go through it thoroughly. so it is used in case you want to check the null condition and is if expression is null then by default it will return null or else the value that is instructed uh jo like uh, this question mark and dot save call operator it check the value whether it is null or not if the value is null it will return null otherwise it will uh, print the value that is given in the variable itself not null assertion check whether the value is null or not not null assertion if you put not null assertion in any of the variable we can't have the null value in that we have to put and we have to put a uh, like string or an integer or any other data type pagal ho raha hai kya now the major Uh, portion of any programming language is OOP concept, object-oriented programming. So Kotlin is also object-oriented programming. See, object-oriented pro object-oriented programming nothing we can do in a one session. You have to like uh, learn it for four to five sessions. Uh, in this, we are just uh, having a brief introduction about what are classes and objects that you need to do in uh, Android apps. Uh, so class is basically a definition which start with a class keyword we first declare a class and then its name and then the body of the class class is atul if you want to be in meeting so kindly please maintain the decorum otherwise we will remove you
Um, ma'am, sorry. Actually, sound is from outside. Yeah. So, can you please mute your mic? So, class is basically a definition that start with class keyword. So, it have three major parts. First is properties, method, and constructor. So, properties are the variable that specify the attributes. Like properties have the uh, attributes like int, uh, int any digit or uh, string or any number. Methods are the function that contain class behavior and actions. Constructor are a special member function that create instance of the class. See, instance are a non-static variable which are defined in class outside any method. Instance are basically in Java or in C++, we write like public string name or like private int any number or any age or any variable. So that is the instance. Constructor are the major part of any class. Constructor are um, which you, <coughs> constructor are those which initialize an object or make an object ready to use. Okay, so like, let me take you to the course. This is the like major portion, classes and object. It is something like, I feel you should go on your own and have a good read on it. It will definitely help those who are in CS. It's a very important concept for all. Uh, like in methods, if we want to call a method, we write a class object, then dot the method name of the class. And then here we write the arguments. Like here is a function. We have written a value smart TV, which have a uh, like method name smart TV. And then we are uh, making an object of it and then calling it in the program. So constructor are of two types. Uh, one is default constructor and other is parameterized. In default constructor, we don't have like value of it. In parameterized constructor, we uh, like we uh, give the value, be it like string or integer, any other type. We have to pass the value in it. There are two types of constructor in Kotlin, like first is primary and other is secondary. A primary constructor is defined as a part of class header, like it's the main function of the class. Or primary constructor is a default constructor or can be a parameterized constructor. Primary constructor doesn't have a body, like in this default constructor doesn't have a body. We can have a constructor like this in our program like which doesn't have a body, just have a like initialized and then leave it like this. A secondary constructor can have a parameter or don't have a parameter in it. A secondary constructor can initialize the class and body and can have a logic. One of the major concept of OOP is inheritance. In inheritance, we inherit the properties of the like superclass in a subclass, like in this, uh, like see this diagram. Uh, we have a subclass here and an optional parameter and it inherit the property from superclass. Those who already know C++ or Java, they have the idea what is superclass and what is subclass. Uh, yeah, they have the idea. You can write in chat box if you have like idea of superclass and what is subclass. Am I audible? <laughs> oh, okay, so a uh, superclass is like a main class of a program and uh, subclass is like which we inherit from it. Like we create a new class from the superclass. Uh, 
here is the link uh, we will provide you the ppt at the end you can go through the oop concept from w3 schools uh, of java uh, if you learn oop concept from java language it's uh, like a great thing because in java the things are explained in a detail and you can uh, then move to the kotlin it will be easier for you to understand like what is inheritance and what is encapsulation and all so it's better you go once go through it if you don't understand it you can ping me or kajal or we will provide you other resources also from from where you can learn but in the kotlin course which we have in like android compose camp there there are just basics of the oops so there is no need to worry about like you don't know the oop concept or anything the syntax to call method from super class is we use the super keyword followed by the operator and a function name like uh, in if you want to, to inherit from like super class you have to write super dot function name and then you can write the arguments if you want to have like uh, value in it modify there are four type of modify like in which we can have the class or objects like they are public private protected and internal public modifier are those in which we can access all the things from super class to the sub class private are those which are used only within a class protected are those which we can use in sub class but like they have restriction in it and in internal class we can use modify within a class and can access as long as it is exists in the same class or a same module uh, this is the like syntax of modifier how uh, we have to call and how we have to you know <coughs> go through the modifier if you want to access from super class to the sub class yeah visibility of modifier for constructor the modifier is specified after the class name but before the constructor keyword like there is a constructor so we have to specify a name called modifier if you like first we have to specify class and then its name and then we have to specify that it's a modifier and then constructor and we have to pass the parameter if we want to and then the body of the program um interface is a protocol to which classes that implement it are adhere it focuses on what to do instead how to do action in interface we have to like look how we can um, like how we can inherit or how we can do the uh, things in a subclass or it's basically used uh, to achieve the abstraction so we, you don't need to worry about what is abstraction at all basically uh, you have to just know about inheritance in this course so first go through that and from here kajal will take over and she will uh, explain the dice roller app kajal you can go Am I audible? Ah uh, yes. Okay, so this is Android Studio. I have opened. Here you can see uh, this is project structure, and this is the Dice Roller app, and here is the preview of uh, this app. So uh, for the main code, you have to go into Java folder, then. the first one and here this one is the main activity.kt file where your main code is saved now here the same things are there uh, package name import then the set content is calling dice roller app then here uh, dice with button image so uh, first let me tell you that uh, how how you could uh, just uh, insert the image you have to go into view then tool windows 
then the resource manager then from here click on the plus then import drawables then from here you can just import an image like uh, for example let me print So as you can see, it has uh, displayed over here. And from uh, from here, we can just directly use our image and our code. Uh, for example, in this case, we have uh, six images of the dice, which uh, uh, which we are just containing in this, which we are calling here. Okay, uh, so first of all, we have uh, uh, provided a frame so, uh, so for that. For that, we will need to set the modifier uh, to its parameter. Then we have set the uh, maximum size. Then we have wrapped the content to the center. Then uh, uh, this function is the preview one, which is being displayed here. And it can be same as this uh, it can be same as the main function also if we uh, just do, uh, do not uh, include this and uh, this in our code it can run our application if i'm going to comment this so from here you will have to run your app The Cradle is building the file. This is our emulator. It takes time, so have patience. Okay, so I think there's an error. Uh, for that, uh, we will need to uncomment this because uh, we have not uh, defined a function with the name dice ruler app. For that, we will need to create a function. So first, let me uh, uncomment this. Then we can just remove this preview thing. The cradle is not stopping it. Okay, so let me show you the output from here. The cradle is doing its work.
So on click of this, it just changes the dice. So this was the output. Now let me just go into code. Okay, Gradle has stopped. Now let me rerun this. So we are calling this function into the main. After this, we have dice with button and image function uh, where uh, we are just calling out the images and uh, we are just declaring the button. So uh, if the if uh, the uh, here the random case will be uh, will be uh, performing. So if uh, if it just uh, set out to one, so it will display the image one, the, uh, the dice one image. And if it set out to two or any of these number, so it will set out to respective dice. So, uh, and else it will set out to dice six. So, uh, uh, in a Jetpack Compose or, or we can say, uh, or we can say in in this type of uh, code, it is uh, it is by default stack. It is by uh, it is by uh, default in stack. The widgets are displayed in stack. Means uh, uh, one above the other. So for that we will uh, we will use the layout and which is here the column, which will uh, which will just uh, display the things line by line to us in the column format. As you can see here, the random function is used so that we can have the numbers from one to six, which is stored in result. And uh, this will be done on the button click. The result will be having any, any value from one to six, and it will just set out to over here, uh, this condition, and it will display the respective dice image. I hope it's clear to you. Any doubts you're having, you can ask me. You can write in chat box if you have any doubt. Okay, so we are done with today's session. Thank you all. Have a great day. You can leave. If possible, can participants just open their camera for a picture? Request co team to kindly turn on their camera. I am unmute. Okay, mute. Okay,
Uh, Priyanka, uh, just take the screenshot. Yes, we take it. Okay, thank you so much for joining the session. You all can leave the meeting.